Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, we have a very special guest here with us this evening, Brother uh, Greg. Again, uh, you guys, we, we, we had Brother Greg on, oh gosh, I don't even know how long ago it's been now, but it's, it's been been a while. And, uh, and October the 3rd. October the 3rd. Thank you, brother. So, you know, but what an amazing uh, time we had the last time. Uh, so many, many people were blessed from that information uh, that you shared with us going deep into the, the crazy things that, that the government hides from the world. And so it is a, a privilege to be able to get you back on here again, Brother Greg. And I know when we were talking not long ago, uh, you'd made the mention about, you know, maybe we should just take the gloves off and just tell people like it is because people don't realize just how crazy things are. I mean, the devil is pretty crazy. He's and, a parasite. Yes, and he's got some very evil, sinister plans. Uh, and so uh, for those of you that don't know, I mean, Brother Greg, he's in the military. He also was uh, uh, worked. Well, I'm going to let him tell you about those different things that, that he did. But he has seen things that most people could ne would never be able to wrap their head around. And when I first heard him online, which was probably about eight months ago, maybe a year ago, uh, it was the first time that I had ever heard anyone that that could understand and know the things that I had shared with you guys, uh, but on a firsthand basis. For me, it wasn't firsthand. It's because of my connections in the intelligence community. Uh, friends that I have that, that work deep in those areas that also were firsthand witnesses like Greg was, uh, that I would share things with you that they shared with me. Uh, and, uh, and I may even, may even drop some of that again tonight uh, that, that I've never shared before. Uh, so anyway, Brother Greg, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me on again. So if you can, give people, again, we'll just act like, Greg, they've never seen you before to some degree. And if you can give them a little bit about your background so they understand where you're coming from. Well, I was in the Air Force, an airplane mechanic. And when I got out, I went um, hunting, bear hunting in uh, Colorado. And I got a job at a real estate place was selling real estate went under and I was looking for a job that said high security um, possibly possible violence that's what it said in the paper and so I thought well I've seen enough violence to know how to handle it so I applied for it and got the job being another guy and we, we were the only ones that applied and we both got the job and they sent him somewhere else but we have both been to all the base. Well, not all of them, but most of the bad places. They were just bad, evil. And so it was rough. Uh, for the first year, I had a real hard time. You couldn't stay with six months at a time because of radiation levels. So they'd send you back out in your home for a couple of months and then let you come back. Um, it actually burns the teeth on my bottom jaw, but thank God I don't have any cancer from it. So they're going to pull them all here pretty soon and put dental implants in for me. Greg, was that radiation due to, uh, the secret underground bases where you dealt with, uh, extraterrestrials and, and, and say, for example, their spacecraft, I have heard from, uh, intel that I've talked to that one form that said that there's different types of spacecraft, but one particular type does use a form of nuclear energy. Yes, and I seen a film the other day of the TRB-3 um, using its laser. I've never seen anything so destructive in all my life. Oh my God, it was just unbelievable. It just, wherever that laser hit, just vaporized everything. And 
I'm glad I got to see it, but it's been destroyed. And but I was really glad to see it, but it put it'll put the fear in you. I'm telling you, and it didn't really make me fearful as it did anxious. And you're not supposed to be anxious for nothing. But the one thing that I do have is no fear of them. And when they come, now I'm not going to say no, I shouldn't say no fear, because when they come, everybody's going to be afraid whether you've seen them or not, because they're up to no good. They're, they want to destroy all of hum, humankind. They want to destroy everybody that's human so that they can take over the planet. And they don't care if they kill each other or you or anything. They just want to destroy us because they're jealous because God forgives us, but he doesn't them. And so they just want to wipe us. They think they can just take God's creation and wipe it off the planet and rub it in his face, but they're not going to get there. So there's a lot of uh, new weapons I've seen. I watched a hypersonic uh, the other day, and it went 10 miles in less than three seconds. Mm. I never seen anything like that. All you seen was a flash, and that was it. And it was a whole, they shot it on a railroad, on a rail, you know, so they could stop it. Right. And it went uh, right at 8,000 miles an hour. But all you seen was a flash, and by the time you seen that flash, it was already there, 10 miles away. Wow. So and, you know, Greg, I hear about these hypersonic weapons, man, we're used to be, uh, you know, a day before the weapon can get here. And then they got it down to hours and now they got it down to seconds. So if a, a hypersonic nuclear weapon was launched against us, it would be here in seconds. There would be no time to react. Mm. And that's the fear that America has of, uh, you know, Russia has it, China has it. In fact, uh, uh, one friend of mine in the intelligence community, he said China doesn't talk a lot about what they have. He said, but he said the Russians actually got their technology from China for the hypersonic weapons. And he said China is far more advanced than Russia is on hypersonic nuclear weapons. He said, so if we ever ended up in a war against either one of them and they go to using nuclear weapons, he said, that, we're just over. It would be over within seconds. Well, minutes. Let's just say minutes. Um, it would be over within minutes. And um, I already know that things are coming down the line um, before we get into the deeper stuff about space. Um, um you know, Texas is going to war. You knew that, didn't you? I've I've heard a little bit about it as of yesterday. Um, one of my yeah. sources in FEMA told me that. One of uh, uh, we're going to have civil war. Hopefully, by hopefully pray pray to God that it doesn't happen by next week. That's how close we are. It could happen next week because mm -hmm. Texas, rightfully so. Is is protected, and so uh, I think the whole national guard, the whole national guard, away from Texas, and leave them there. So he's already trying to cut the fences, and so Texas is not safe. And I, hang on one second, brother Greg. You're they're they're trying to interfere with your signal there. Let's okay. Let's go again with Texas. Let's try it again. They've declared it. Okay. Now, now you've come back. Yeah. I don't know, Brother Gray. We'll we'll have to repeat the part about Texas. They have interfered with the signal here because of what we're talking about. Go ahead. Well, Texas, we are going to have civil war. So everybody better be can't buying food and stuff and. Me and Carolyn was just talking. She knew about it, too. And we were just talking about, oh, my gosh, killing it. You know, when it comes to the war, we, you know, they got goats, chickens, and all that. And I got tr fruit trees and stuff up here. Can you imagine having to kill people you know to keep them from stealing your stuff? Hmm. 
Well, it, we know it's going to get pretty ugly regardless. And I also heard that Georgia reached out to Texas because they have their own military, basically. Not the National Guard, but their own, like, uh, defense. Yeah. And they've reached out to uh, Texas and said that they would help them in the event of, you know, any 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 problems going on. Uh, so this is just things I was hearing last night uh, about the situation that's going on over there. Yeah, I found out two days ago a real good brother, um, I'll just say his first name is Joseph, had sent me, he stays on top of things, he's a very good informant, and he stays on top of things. So far, what he tells me has been happening. So I've got a good source, and... Um, you got to remember, this is a biblical thing that's happening, this civil war. It's not something that you can stop. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter what you do. And, uh, you know, people talk about the extraterrestrials and stuff. Remember this, too, that the Bible never used the word extraterrestrials. It used the word extracelestrials. Not one, there's not one place I can find in the Bible that says the word extraterrestrial. It says that people mess around with extraterrestrial things that they don't understand. And the only thing that you can, that people take that like the extraterrestrials is the UFOs, which we know are all demonic and they come from up from, from, they come down from the earth. And in Ephesians six, it says we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. And spiritual wickedness in high places, and in some places, in some the New King King James version says, in the heavenly realms. Right, that's exactly right, and that's one of and the so, scriptures that I quote quite frequently, um, so that people understand that you know the battle is not what they think it is, and uh, and. And, and we also know the scripture says that fearful sights are coming up on the earth uh, that yeah, would cause man's hearts to fail for fear. The giants come up from the ground and Satan comes down from heaven, mm. from the heavenlies. So you got it coming both ways. And just like those giants in uh, Miami. Now, I really, really have got some people that are very smart on on that stuff, helping me. One guy's got like seven computers going at one time, and he knows how to check Photoshop and all. And he showed me the film that he had, and they were real. They were 10 feet tall, and they were blackish and kind of, uh, kind of transparent a little bit. And you can see them disappear. And... He said, I, brother, he said, I've checked everything. And he said, that is not Photoshop. He said, that really happened. Well, you know, there was a hundred police cars out there that day and they shut the mall down and all the power off down that street, but not one cop would say anything. And one guy, his dad was a cop there and he said, he's begged his dad and his dad said, I can't tell you what happened there. I'm not allowed to. You know, so brother. That, that just gives it away. Brother Greg, three months before that event happened, uh, I had spoke with uh, a friend that, that has had the first-hand experience, and also um, he's re retired now, but uh, he had worked like you, been to Dulcie. He's seen uh, reptilians, uh, at least one reptilian firsthand in his life. Um, and he said to me, he said that you, one thing you want to be aware of, he said, we're about, we're, he said it's already happening. He said they call it the dimensions are mingling together. And, it's called quantum entanglement. Okay. And he said, that, uh, he said that you will see creatures, he said, and alien entities from other dimensions he said because we will merge into theirs theirs into ours and he said they'll see you you'll see them and he said it's going to be some of the most hideous sights you could ever imagine well just recently i asked him about the miami incident i said was that one of those he said yes 
And he said, uh, but he said right now, he said the main place it's happening is in Russia. And uh, he said, but they are really trying to keep it under wraps so that the people don't have fear. He said, but they're getting it worse than anybody. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you remember the hikers that went into the woods and disappeared. um, And and I think it was in the 50s or 60s. Right. You know, you know about that incident. I do. And there's, they there's all, four and they of them, I believe. Yeah, when they went, no, there were six, I think. Okay, you might be right. But when they went there to try to retrieve them to find out what happened to them, they found them all dead, scattered around, with their tongues cut out, and the and the tents were ripped open with a knife from the inside. And so, um, one of the girls. It was on that expedition, and they don't show it no more. I just happened to be lucky and got to read it. <laughs> but one of the girls had written a letter to her mother from there saying, the Yeti really does exist. So wow. they were killed by giants because they said there would be footprints. It would start somewhere and stop, and there wouldn't be no more like they were dropped down and lifted back up. And Hmm. so I've I've done a lot of study on that case. And I think that Russia has a lot of deep underground military bases in in Siberia. That's what has happened at is in Siberia. And, um, you know, it's hard. They get covered with snow and nobody knows about it, you know. But I think that they put their portals, gateways, and because the Russians don't even pull with it, you know, they, they don't even pull with it. But as a matter of fact, like you said, they're trying to get a handle on it and can't. And they're not going to be able to. Nobody is. I actually, that story there, um, a friend of mine in D.C. had told me about it. And I did, I actually went, it took a lot of work to even find anything on it. And I did a broadcast on it. And the strange thing is, Brother Greg, when I did that broadcast, within two weeks, the next thing I know, the story had came back into the light of the media and they were trying to explain it away as some just natural phenomena that it was nothing to do with, with anything strange. Because if, rem- if I remember right, also, I think they were naked or something when they found them, or without shoes or, or yeah, some, were. something weird. They were naked, like they were running with their clothes off in snow that was three feet deep. Right. And they had to wait till the thaw came before they could find them, and they found them ripped apart. They, were, they had been ripped apart. Right. And I remember the issue about the tongues being cut out. Uh, and what brought this up was that and when they when I was being told about this is that they weren't saying anything about it, but we had just had a case like that. They didn't let it go public uh, out west. And I forget which, which, it was in one of the national parks, and they would not disclose to me which one it was, but they had found uh, people that, that had the exact same thing. The tongues were cut out of the, uh, the victims, and everything was that reminiscent of what happened in Russia. Well, do you know it, Timothy Alberino? Yes, I do. Okay. you got to get him on, really, because me and him are like two minds, you know, in the one. But he went and to the desert southwest here in the United States and talked to an Indian chief there. And I think, don't hold me too, but I think it was New Mexico. It might have been the Baja. I don't know what. But they found bones of people, you know, not just skeleton, but they found bones scattered everywhere. And uh, they matched some of the DNA up to bones that were a hundred yards away from it. Um, Mm -hmm. And some of them were, had teeth marks all in them. That was from the giants back then. He said that they, they had all kinds of names for them, but they were huge. He said they were just like 30 feet tall. It was bad. And um, so he, he really knows his way around the, the, the bones and stuff. And, you know, he, 
he knows well as I do, he went to Peru and lived there in the jungle, him and his wife, for years. Mm. And trying to find out something. But he's, he's got some amazing stories. Yeah, um, we've tried before to hook up, and I'll have to get back with him again because uh, I guess there's a couple of, well, about four months ago, we were trying to set together to work out a time to do a broadcast together. Uh, and I think you're right. I think it would really be a good, <clears throat> a good interview to uh, to bring him on. And uh, I'd go on with him. I'd go on with him if it were possible. I would gladly do it that way. Uh, so I'll reach out to him and see if we can't do a three way, and we'll really, you know, because you know, brother Greg, what happens even like when you're on it, you bring things up. It makes my mind remember about issues as well. And uh, so it just makes to me for a very in-depth interview uh, to talk about these things. And, you know, if you can, I, I want to, when we get near to the end of the broadcast, I want to discuss with you then about what you know that's going to be coming, what people are going to be facing. But before we get there, can you share with people uh, some of the the incredible things that you have seen uh, that most people would never even understand in the first place. Yeah. Um, let me just start with the simplicity of it. Okay. All these paranormal shows that you see, you know, where the doors are open and closing and blah, 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 and dolls moving and everything, those are demons that come from those UFOs. And here's what people don't know, that 81% of all hauntings, the neighbors had called and said there was a UFO in the area, especially over the house that was haunted. So that is one of the spectacular things. The other is is the shape-shifting that they can do. That, that almost made... The first time I seen it, it scared me so bad I threw up. Um, I, just, I just thought, you know, this just isn't reality. And that's what they all hope for. They hope that I come out here all the time. They hope I do. And, and you know as well as I do, they touched on things. I really think that they killed my wife. And they touched on things. We touch on things that just upset them. And they come after us, me and you both. Me and you are always in danger of being hurt. Well, I think that but was not, pretty obvious a little bit ago when you started talking about Texas. I mean, I, you know, it, look, it's been a long time since I've been in the intelligence world, so I know technology has changed dramatically since those yeah, days. Yeah, you're, you're, you're ex-CIA and Mossad, aren't you? Just CIA, not Mossad. But, uh, CIA. Yes, yeah, so, but and we, did stepdad worked at Area 51. Yes, my stepdad did work at Area 51. He sure did. So he was so, in the he was in the Air Force like yourself, and uh, he he ended up getting thrown off of Area 51. He was placed a, at a guard point, and uh, and was told that no one under no circumstances was to come into the area that he was guarding that day um, and 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 he was permitted to use lethal force well it, well it just so happened a general was trying to come in and he unloaded the gun on the general's car <laughs> so, uh, he well, ended I, up I'll being moved the out the president's not even allowed in right exactly when we, when we were there we had to be you had to be able to shoot at 1200 yards and hit a, I think it was 15 inch steel plate in diameter, 15 inches at 1,200 yards because they wanted you to get them then. Because there, at that time, there were, and I'm sure you stepped in if he was alive to tell you, there was, there were spots that you could get to, and and each time you advanced, it was more dangerous than, and then you got to the last part, which was totally lethal. We had to. You had to be killed. Well, I killed more dogs than anything because people would tie um, cameras around these dogs and have girls run out naked and wave their arms and stuff to distract us, to try to distract us. But I was a very, very dedicated person there. I, I didn't like what I did, but I signed up for it, and I went ahead and did what I was supposed to. 
And um, it didn't distract me. What distracted me was they were up to something. And it usually was dogs or animals. They would set out a fleet of dogs with cameras on to try to sneak in there. Mm. It was so bad. And like I say, when you're in high security like that, you have to know every single thing there is about the place. And you're always uh, looking at the corner of your eye. You're never trustful of the people that you work with because you may have to kill one of them. It was the most stressful job I've ever had in my entire life. It was so stressful. Well, the, you know, I told you the doctor gave me some uh, anxiety pills because when I came out, I was shaking all the time. And my, my mother knew what was going on, I think. Uh, she knew I was there. And, um, but I didn't talk about it to nobody. I waited for years to say anything. Um, and Daniel Ott was the first one that I said it on. You know, right, and, right. Um, and that, I think that was in 2006, 2005. So it's been 20 years since I, when I first talked about it, and everybody was like, "What? What do you mean this and that? You know, the there's 160 different species of so-called aliens. Probably more than that. And people think, you know, the Palladians because they're white." They're here for our good. There's none of them here for our good. They all stink. They smell like sulfur. And they, they're they just none of them here for any good. Even Billy Meyer said it. That's the exact same thing my own counterpart in D.C. always said, too. He said, Stephen, he said, they'll, some people try to say that some of these are benevolent. He said they're not. Um, no. We actually met one time with, um, oh goodness, what's her name? A uh, very, very well known reporter. Um, I've got her in my, she, she did a lot of the uh, disclosure reporting about cattle mutilation, abduction. Uh, she's done the, the Black Pyramid up in Alaska. Uh, and gosh, I know her name, but I can't think of it right off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, she's an, she's elderly now, but she's still working, still working. And right. uh, and we met with her uh, privately, and uh, and she asked some of those questions mm -hmm. about because she felt like that the Palladians would be more um, for humanity. And that, uh, you know, that, you know, that, you know, they're, they're basically the head on the Galactic Council. And, uh, and, and my own counterpart said back to her, he said, uh, no, he said, there, he said, none of them are benevolent. And he Not said one. that, uh, he said, you have to understand, he said, the reptilians and the Palladians, they have a quarrel with each other. But he said, and the Palladians are more advanced technologically and in intelligence wise they're more advanced. They've drawn the line in the sand. Right. But he said when it comes to these issues, he said, especially planet Earth, he said the reptilians told her told told told, told the uh, Palladians straight up, we will cause you more problems than you ever thought on other place in, in the in the galaxy. Uh and he said, uh, so if you don't want if you don't back down when it comes to us taking over the earth uh, you're going to face some real issues. He said, now the thing is, he said, reptilians have all other species well outnumbered uh, in their ranks. They have just tremendous oh, numbers of them. There's millions. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think that the Bible says that, that there'll be a time when they outnumber the people in the earth when we're outnumbered. Mm. And see... Remember when Satan was swept out of heaven, uh, one third of the angels fell with him. That means he was already outnumbered two to one that day. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. God, God had his creation that he was going to do. He knew what um, Satan was going to do. And so he was outnumbered two to one. Otherwise, he, we, we, there wouldn't be nobody alive now. And the only advantage that he's got is abducting people, extracting their DNA, and putting it into animals and to other humans. And then if it doesn't come out human-looking, 
they either just, I don't know what they do with it, but I know they destroy some of them and start over again. But they're extracting our DNA to mix into their bloodlines to make them look real. Now, with that said, I'll tell you this, that they are among us already. And you you probably walk past them every day. Well, don't even know it. Right. And and, and by the way, uh, I, I looked it up real quick on my phone while we were talking here. It was actually Linda, Linda Moulton Howe that, that we met with privately. And um, and we spent two days with her in about 18 hours uh, of just discussing different uh, thoughts there. And she really picked his brain because she wanted to know a lot of the things that he knew. And, you know, and then, of course, he, he, he told her, he said that the government is still watching you. Uh, he said, you know, they bug you, they this, they that. And, uh, and we had a lot of discussions about her. Uh, listen, I got a question for you, though, brother. I, I, actually, a good friend of mine with FEMA sent me this question because they happened to be updating me about different things that are going on. And one of the things that they said was that, that the magnetosphere is starting to collapse. That's one reason why we're starting to see more and more uh, these giant entities that are coming through. Now, I know initially, about a year ago, that's what they were telling me in Washington, uh, and I actually got that information too from a good friend of mine, a German scientist in Germany, that they anticipated that the magnetosphere would, would collapse, to, and I don't think it's full collapse, but because of the weakening of it through all this uh, activity on the sun, that as that happens, that, that people would see things like they've never even could imagine before. Uh, and so that was one of the things that uh, they asked me if I would ask you, is that uh, the 10-foot giants and other creatures are coming through, and they, this is the, the, the statement, because of the collapse of the magnetosphere, uh, and they said that Mike from around the world was saying that, so the entities are floating around us at all times as well uh, as in space as they can cross over. Is that the same thing uh, that, that you would be aware of? Yes. So he told you to ask me that? As actually the person in FEMA that w was watching... Uh, uh, it's a friend of mine that's an engineer in FEMA that's pretty pretty well uh, in tune. And, and uh, I know that that person's boss that that they get they have good contact with sits in a lot of those private meetings up in Washington. Uh, so it's always been kind of interesting to see that they have the same type of understanding on a lot of issues that I do. And uh, so I actually asked one day when I was, uh, on, on the phone with some, or not on the phone, but on a uh, private hookup that we have, uh, I said, how come people in FEMA seem to know some of the things that, that I'm aware of? And they said, well, it's because that they have a representative sitting there uh, in the very uh, meetings that are, that are where a lot of disclosures go on at. They always have a representative there. So I said, well, that person must be connected with the representative then because they seem to know everything we know. So, but yeah, they were, they were just curious if you were aware of anything about the magnetosphere and, and entities coming through as a result of that. Yes. Uh, tell me he's exactly right. Um, that's exactly what's happening. And remember, FEMA runs all the concentration camps. Oh, yes. We have discussed they have that too. The guillotine's just waiting. Yes. I agree with that so much. Brother Greg, can you tell us a little bit about what you have seen in, in this life since with the things that you did? Because I know that you've been down in Dulce. Uh, I know there's seven levels deep in that area there. I remember when I was out there, I, I, I've not been inside the facility directly, but uh, I did some meetings at, at that uh, particular area. And at that time, that's when I was told that if you want to see the traffic of of extraterrestrial craft, which I brought my night vision with me, they said, well, we'll go on the roof here and let's look at it. And sure enough, we've seen, I think, a total of seven alien spacecraft, three of our own, uh, just in one evening. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dulcie's close. Dulcie, I'm sorry, <laughs> is as close to hell as you'll ever get. They they um, have firefights down there constantly with the grays. Now, when I was there, that was the first time I seen a giant. And it was not pretty, and it was um, it's actually scary. It was like, I don't know any word to use except suspended animation that it was in um, these giants, and there's more than one. But the Greys have gotten control of Dulcie at one time. You remember Bill Schneider? Yes. He got his fingers shot up down there, and one of the soldiers from at the top had to, hurry up and get down there and get him before they killed him. He was in a full bone firefight with him. And um, they, that's because they took it over more than they should. And I wouldn't be surprised if those that aren't in agreement with them are out of there. They wouldn't surprise me. And I did talk to a pilot who said he flew over there one time. Now, this is just his words, okay? He said, I was going over and there's a, there was a field, and it unzipped like a zipper on pants and zipped mm. back up. So, I mean, he was pretty, and I know he was telling the truth because he was just right. He, he said, I'll never fly over that place again. Wow. But it's a very dangerous place. There's giants there. There's mutations, which I, we, you know, they're called chimeras, where they take, um, human DNA and mix it with animal DNA and try to create monsters. And the reason for this is because they think that they can control those monsters to put into our army along with AI. See, AI, I've been watching this AI thing and you can't tell them, you can't tell the difference from them and a human. You can't. You know, I can but I could see where the average person would never know it. So the AI thing scares me a lot. Um, that's what people are going to see. And But what really is going to scare people, especially the children, I feel so sorry for the kids who've never seen monsters before, and their greatest nightmare is going to come to life, and they're going to see it. And the bottom line is that people don't read the Bible anymore, and so they're not prepared. Nobody's prepared for this. Not even the ones that are, uh, you know, reading their Bibles and praying and stuff. Um, some of them aren't prepared. And most of these mega churches, it's all about the money. Nobody's getting told the truth. Nobody's getting told the truth. That's why when I come on here, I get judged. You get judged. We get judged for everything. They, People beg on their hands and knees, please, t uh, somebody come out of there and tell us what's going on. And when you do, oh, you're crazy. Well, that's why nobody wants to talk about it no more. They don't want to be labeled as nuts. And I am nuts, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, that's exactly what my wife told me uh, when she was, I think, 14 years old. Uh, she was riding in the car with her brother. And this was close to the Russian border. And there was a, uh, we'll say a tic-tac type shape uh, uh, UFO that was hovering in a field, uh, she said, about 100 yards from the road. And her little nephew was the first one that saw it. And he started screaming, Daddy, 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 you know. And uh, she said, and her brother, when he saw it, she said he stopped the car and she said, you know, my brother got out and literally started walking out there in the field to it. And she said, I'm screaming at him thinking he's nuts and uh, to get back in the car. And uh, she said, but then the thing just suddenly it just went straight up, right out of just like nowhere. And um, she said, then it was probably a week later, uh, he got abducted and they did bring him back and uh, she said he was trying to tell the family what happened. And she said, my brother Probably is a, beat up. oh, she said he's a fighter anyway. And she said, he's a big man, you know, and he, she said he was black and blue all over. And uh, he said, when he was trying to tell the family, the family thought he was, had lost his mind. 
And he, t- he looked at Yana and he said, tell him, do, you know, you saw it yourself. We've seen a UFO like just a week ago. And she said she was so fearful that the family would label her nuts like him. She wouldn't, she wouldn't come to his aid. She said, I regret that to this day. But uh, she said, yeah, she said they just, she said, because people just didn't believe in those things. And he ended up getting abducted several times and he described them. He said they were very tall and uh, he said they wore black all over with, with, a, with a kind of a hat where you couldn't see their face very well. But when you did see their face, she said it was like super, super white. And, uh, you know, and she said, but he was terrified of them. And uh, that's, that's because they're dead already. And here's another thing about abduction. When you see a UFO and you approach it like he did, and all of a sudden it takes off, do you believe that you could have been abducted then and don't even know it? Because, see, time is time. God made time. There is no time. God made time. And so they're in the interdimensional, so they know how to work their way through time, get you, bring you back so quick in the blink of an eye, but actually you've been gone for hours. And so, and all, and I used to listen to a lot of people that were, uh, you know, uh, affiliated with Project Blue Book and um, other things. And, and also eyewitness, um, I, I witnessed interviews, okay, of, of abducted people. And not one person that I ever heard, and I heard probably close to a hundred um, abductees interviews, that they, any of them had a good experience. None of them. It was just frightening, and it was terrible. And they did it through regression, you know. Right, right. Back, back, back regression, which I, I would never let them do it on me because I think it's the kind of satanic because it opens up your mind to other things, too. It opens up your mind what happened. And once you've figured, once they've opened up your mind what happens, that stays with you, and you're scared the rest of your life. Mm. And I don't think they should do it. Wow. And, but when you see a UFO and it disappears, if you went, don't do it, but if you went to regression, you probably were abducted in that split second. Well, look at Barney Hill. Yes. In his life. Yes. They didn't even know that they had been abducted. He just stepped out of his car, and then next thing you know, he was stepping back in. Wow. Mm. Him and his wife, you know, had a terrible experience. Really terrible. Um, and, you know, and back in those days, you know, it wasn't, it was in, well, it was in the 50s or 60s, I can't remember. But, you know, people, a black and a white person, well, it wasn't socially acceptable then. I always accepted it. I never bothered me at all. But a lot of people, it didn't. So he, they stayed quiet about it for a long time. And I felt so sorry for them because I've heard their interviews. Have you heard them? Yes, I have. I have. And you're right. What happened to them was definitely a terrifying experience. Uh, Brother Greg, what what was it like, and what were some of those entities that I know you've talked about before? You you've seen reptilians uh, firsthand and other types. Can you describe what uh, what that was like, what they look like, etc.? Well, here's the funny part. Here's the hard part to explain. You see the mantis and the reptilians, the greys, and this and that. You really don't know which one they are because they can shape shift into any form that they want. So you really, you know, it's uh, reptilian control, but they, they, they pray. It's they're, they're part of the devil, man. They prey on your fear. And so my greatest fear back then, because, and people are going to think I'm nuts when I say this, but I really did see a werewolf. I really did see one there. Really. And I know those and, exist. I've actually was given uh, photos of one that that was that was in an autopsy room in D.C. Um, and and of course I've been told that they, I don't know where they keep this stuff in captivity, but they say that they have one werewolf in captivity, and uh, one friend seen, of mine actually seen that one. I seen one that they had in captivity at Dulcie, and that's why I'm afraid of. 
And so when, I mean, you couldn't, I'd go, see, right now I'm having problems sleeping, and you know why, but I can stay up for days because I, I don't, number one, I don't want to be alone. And number two, these entities exist. And really, there's no way to stop them unless you have copper bullets. The silver bullet thing's just, a, I don't know what that is. But it has to be solid copper bullets. Solid copper. Can't be copper jacketed. You're the only thing that kills them. And the problem is, is when you see something like that, how are you going to react? You've got to react right then and hope. And the problem with reacting like then is if you shoot it and it shapes you back to human form, then you're going to get charged with murder. So you're at a dilemma. And the only place I felt free was at these underground bases because I, I was, we weren't held accountable for stuff like that. We were never held accountable. And so my greatest fear was werewolf and I've seen that shape shift into a reptilian, into this, into that. And I had uh, one experience I'll tell you about this Jewish guy that worked there. He, wanted to see his father and they they made it happen that reptilian or gray it was gray i'm sorry the gray made it happen and they locked him in a room with the glass and all of a sudden there was like an ex, not the sound of an explosion but an explosion of blood all over the window of that glass where it had killed him and we warned him we warned him and he was part of the system there so you know he had a high he, I couldn't stop him, and he paid with his life. Mm. You know, he was seeking the dead among the living is what he was doing. Wow. Good night. And I've been walked past places that had guts and stuff all over the floors. What happened in there, I have no idea. I was sent there on detail... You know, I was I was told one time, Brother Greg, and I lost your audio for a second, so we'll see what happened there. But um, let me just see. Oh, I see. We actually lost the connection. Let's give me one second. We'll get Greg back on the phone here. Yeah, they tried to cut us off. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. I, and and it, actually, it was almost at the right point there. So what I was asking you or saying was sharing with you is that. Uh, when you mentioned that the horrors that you've seen at Dulce, um, one friend of mine that's been at Dulce told me, he said that that is the most terrifying place you could ever go to. And he said the evils of things that are done, the experiments they do on humans. Um, he said that he knew of for a fact, he said they took, and he said, in the and it's the it's the aliens working with uh, human scientists that do these experiments. Yeah, he said. But I know that they took a man and a woman. He said a lot of times what it is they would abduct the homeless. Uh, that's how they got their specimens. And uh, he said they took a man and a woman, had cut them in half, and reconnected the two halves, yeah. the male half with a female half. He said, and when the thing recovered, he said 90% neurologically, they were back intact. Uh, and he said, the mo he said he'd seen the, like what you see in legends, like uh, half man, half horse, half man, half different types I've of creatures. Those, I've seen those half man, half horse. I've seen them. Half yeah. man, half goat. I've seen them. And... Yeah, so go on. I, I know what you're talking about. I've seen them. So, and that's what, well, that's what I wanted to ask you, if you'd actually seen any of these things. And, and he said the hideous screams and things, you know, that go on. Uh, you know, it kind of made me wonder, do they do some of these surgeries, kind of like what they talk about in Gaza and that war there, where these surgeons don't have anesthesia. You know, it's not like Dulcie wouldn't have access to it, but why is it that, you know, when he would because tell me about this, it is horrible? Because they like pain and fear. That's what they feed off of. Okay. 
So it it's probably like, is, like, just like in Gaza. No no anesthesia, no nothing. They just do it. Yeah. They, they Look, they live on fear like we live on food. They've got to have it. All right. So that, they, that, that brings okay. me to another question for you then, Brother okay. Greg. I just got told recently... And this makes me really wonder what's what's why things are happening, what they're happening in Gaza now. And I may I may actually know the answer to this with with what you just said. I was told that in Gaza they found a giant that was buried there. Uh, the Israelis did, and we're and I know this is going to sound crazy when I say it, but we're talking about a giant that would be like a mile tall. Uh, I don't doubt it. And he said that there was gold found there, something to do about that these giants, when they died, because uh, I remember one time I was asked by these guys, they asked me, is there anything in the Dead Sea Scrolls that would support a giant being as big as a mountain? And when they told me that, I said, well, you know, it's kind of interesting. I used to just think, was it, I said, you know, I said it as a joke, but I said, was there a typographical error? I said, because I'm reading one of these Hebrew scrolls, and sure enough, it said when the giants fell on the earth, they looked like mountains. They were so huge. Yeah. Well, let me just tell you this. You know where Devil's Tower is in Wyoming? I've heard of it, yes. I know what you're talking okay. about. It's probably, uh, I don't know how many feet high, maybe 600 feet high or whatever. That's a tree stump. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about now. And they, I think they did the DNA testing on it. It's a human body. Yeah. So if that'll tell you anything about how tall they were back then, and they they actually wiped their own selves out. I mean, they're not completely wiped out because they're here now. But the Bible says that they would be here before then and after then. And listen to this. I'm watching right now on TV. A picture of the Pope, and it says AI generated and Taylor Swift. AI generated pictures. You can't tell the difference. Wow. I'm looking at it right now. Well, that, you know, the, all right, so here's why I was asking about that in Gaza. If they're doing these surgeries on these children and stuff, and even adults without anesthesia, and they're not allowing the medical supply in, could it be that there's a portal there? We know that there were giants there because of the fact that you had, uh, you know, you had the Philistines that lived in that area. You had the, you know, the giant that David slew. Could it be that as these dimensions is, are starting to break and, and to, you use a different word. We'll go into that in a second. Mingling is what I was told. Uh, could it be that as they're, as that breaks down, they're able to feed on the suffering of these people, especially during the surgical procedures there. Yes. And remember um, this, too, when David slew Goliath, God had him cut his head off. And the reason that he had him do that wasn't just to scare the Philistines, but it was to sh because they can regenerate because they were still angelic. So oh, my goodness. Now that explains to me the vision I had when I was young. Uh, I had this vision, Brother Gary, and I've told people about this before. Uh, it was a giant serpent that come after me. And when it did, I'm talking about a serpent that was so big, you could ride it like a horse. And the first time he come through jumping through the air, kind of like what the mumba snake does, you know, it leaps through the air to attack its victim. Of course, they're oh, not, yeah, they're, they're, they're not giant. But when it did, I had this dagger in my hand. It wasn't a sword, but it had probably, I'd say, about a 24-inch blade on it. And I struck it in the side of the face. And then it went away. And then I heard the Lord speak to me, and he said, oh, like audibly to me, he said, when he returns, he will be far more vicious than he was the first time. 
And then, sure enough, that serpent come at me again. This time, I mounted it like on a horse, and I started whacking at the back of its neck. And then I heard the Lord say to me, you must cut his head off to kill him. Yeah, because they'll regenerate if you don't. And that was a problem um, at the underground bases. It was a problem. Because they look good and dead, blood, you know, guts and everything after you shoot one. But then you can come back hours later and it's, you can see it healing. Oh, my and goodness. So when I read that about David and Goliath and, and Steve Quayle, you know who he is. Yeah, I know Steve personally. Yeah, Steve's a good guy. He's, he's ADD to the max, though, ain't he? <laughs> 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 but anyway, he said the same thing I did. I couldn't believe it when he said it because he was the one who kind of acknowledged it for me that you got to, that's the reason that David cut Goliath's head off and held it up. And David also brought three more stones because he knew he had brothers, Goliath. And, and when they seen, it wasn't the death of Goliath that frightened them. It was them cutting their head off, his head off, and they knew that he could no longer regenerate. Wow, that is amazing. What is, what is it? All right now, you mentioned uh, to me about the I called it mingling of dimensions. You called it quantum something. Can you explain quantum what that is? At CERN Collider, that's what they're doing. Uh, you know Anthony Patch from Berkeley. Yes. Okay. He says that they have a qu a quantum computer right now that has the um same it's it's more powerful than eight billion brains mm. more than eight billion brains well when they collide those particles together inside cern hadron collider right it's 27 it's 27 kilometers long in, in, in switzerland and it's got a barrel on it um this that goes into the curve that fires the particle and closes and what they do is when those particles burst, it's called quantum entanglement. And quantum entanglement is where you get the interdimensional being. And they're also looking for, and I remember this, you know, and, uh, You're, you're cutting out again, brother. One second. Let me, I want to make sure we don't lose what we got here. Okay, let's try yeah, it again. Now, now you're back. Let's go ahead and try it again. Okay. Okay, you know the scene in heaven, the Psalms, that God loves Psalms. He loves them. Because what they're doing at CERN is they are trying to call what they call the God particle. It's not a particle, it's a frequency that they're looking for because God spoke into existence the universe and earth. He spoke into existence and they want to know what frequency that he spoke that at so they could speak their things in existence. Well, what they've done was they ripped the veil and opened up the doorway to hell. Elon Musk even said that. So he said that he's afraid that when they, what they're doing down there, something demonic is going to come through. Those were his very words. And so um, quantum entanglement's really complicated. I could explain it not as good as Anthony Patch, but I could explain some of it. Um, let me try. Okay. What they do is they, they, do you know what the most explosive substance in the known universe is? I would think water, but I don't know for sure. Lead. Lead, okay. Okay, so they use very small amounts. And what it was made for was to take an atom and smash them together and determine the yield off of that one atom so that they could determine the yield of an atomic bomb without exploding it. And so that's that's what they originally did it for. Well, then they found um, that uh, other things were coming through. And so they just kept on and on and are making it more and more powerful. Now China is going to build a bigger one than that. Because that's what opens the portals. It gets that's tens right. of millions. It gets tens of millions of degrees. In fact, 
when they do it, sometimes they have to shut down the whole thing for six months for it to cool down. I heard at one point they brought an entity through that ended up killing two of the scientists there at, at uh, CERN. Oh, yeah. They, com they commit suicide and everything else when they do that. They have no idea, like God says. They're, you don't poke a hit stick in the hole lest you fall in. And they have fallen in. And they've gotten lies and messages from these interdimensional beings. And extraterrestrial i just hate that word an alien because that's not what they are they're alien to us but even the bible says that in the end days that they will work that we will worship an alien god you you've, you've read that right i know what you're talking about yes yeah that we will worship an alien god that's the only time other than when he's talking about people that he uses the word alien and so you know, um, they're trying to, they, okay, when the Iraq war broke out, a lot of people think it was because they thought Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. They knew he never had weapons of mass destruction. They were going over there, and a lady, and Steve Quayle backed me on this, a lady opened up uh, the museum to them. And a bunch of soldiers, a helicopter came, a bunch of soldiers went down, and they went through everything. There was billion dollars worth of gold down there that we never even touched it. And they found a box, and they got that box out, and um, um, it had Nimrod's head in it. And so what they're wanting to do is they're wanting to bring Nimrod back. And you remember he became... <laughs> You know what I'm, am I right? You're right. I know exactly what the you're Bible talking about. Say, the Bible didn't say that he was a giant start with. It said he became. And so Nimrod ran with an iron fist. And they think that he has all the knowledge. Because when they went down there and got it, the bottom line was they, they found his bones. that was locked up in the Iraqi museum downstairs. The ladies actually said that they just grabbed that box, left everything else behind, got on the helicopter, and she never seen him again. And um, I believe that they flew it straight, straight to Switzerland where they could do um, experiments with the hydrogen collider. And they are trying to bring his brain back to life. Now, how they're going to do that, see, he, he, his head was cut off. So he couldn't regenerate. So they're trying to regenerate him. And, you know, on the top and the bottom poles of Saturn is the abyss. Um, it's a hexagon shape with a swirl in it. And that's, that's where I think that God has the, um, uh, the fallen angels that were so bad that he had to tie them up. And they believe that, too. Don't, don't think that they don't know the Bible and believe it, because they do. Um, that's what gives them their power, uh, they think, is they think that they know what they're doing. And they think that they can shoot. And, and not too long ago, I seen a movie about a collider that they were using because the world had an apocalypse and this and that. And they were trying to bring back life to it. And they were using a collider to do it with. And shooting beams at different planets, trying to bring somebody in. Well... At CERN, they actually believe they can beam down from Saturn the worst of the worst. Wow. Those people are so evil. It's unbelievable. And They're I've heard that, yes, I heard that Saturn was, uh, was a planet where reptilians, uh, it was like a nest of them living there. Well, uh, reptilians can live in any environment. The others can't. And that's why we're seeing climate change and chemtrails and stuff, because we are terraforming the Earth. I, I've heard that exact same thing, that the Earth was being terraformed in order for them to be able to live here easier because we did not have a climate inducive, conducive to theirs. In fact, they said this is one of the reasons why you see uh, these entities more in desert regions, because that's what they prefer. 
Well, and you got to remember, they can't have a base. All their bases have to be underground or underwater. Most of them are underwater. Right. And these tunnels that people say that we dug out, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you the 90% of them we didn't. They were already there. When God flooded the earth, they knew that, that it was coming. And they yep. buried themselves and waited till it was over. And so they are, a lot of those bases that, that you hear about were already there. And myself, I believe that we are in our third earth age, not um, climate or asteroid destroyed. It may have been a destroyed by it like that, but we're in our third earth age. And so I do believe that the earth is a million years old or billion or whatever. God has no time. You know, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Right. And when right. you sit here for one second, God says, when you, when you come up there, not one second of time has went through eternity. Not one second. So God has time, and he created time so that we would have time to make up our minds what we're going to do. But when time runs out, that's it. There will be no more time. When you know, time runs out, time will cease to exist. And so people need to make up their minds now what they're going to do because we are close to civil war. We are having problems with uh, UFOs now or UAPs or whatever they're calling them now. And uh, even David Grush uh, says that we have in our possession their technology and their biologics. So... They they really beat him up bad. I felt so bad for him. Mm. They've destroyed, he said, they've destroyed him personally, physically. They about destroyed his family for the arguing. See the devil when he's when when you have bad thoughts and stuff, he he can't read your mind. He only knows that it works by your reaction. Exactly. That's why it says resist and he'll flee. Because if nothing he says is working, he stops. But if you react, then he knows, okay, there's his weak spot right there. Yep, yep. And that's, Brother Greg, you have, boy, that's so accurate right there, what you just said. I have taught that before. It's been years since I spoke about it, so I'll have to bring that up in a teaching before long. But uh, I've, I've said it to people privately. I said, look, the devil has no clue whether or not what he's doing to you is working, and I said, until you open your big mouth. That big, I, fat man, stick your foot in it. That's you right. Well stick your whole, you might as well roll up in a ball and stick your whole body in it because you just fell for the lie. Yep. And he's a liar. And, you know, everything that has been said, that's why these abductees think some of them are benevolent because they've been lied to and they fell for it. And why wouldn't they? They're on a ship, they think, and sometimes these abductees aren't in a ship. They're at home with the uh, uh, interdimensional properties that they have can make your house look like you're in a ship mm -hmm. and make you see that. Because I've had a lot of people say that they knew that somehow they were Christians, by the way, and somehow they knew that they never left the house. And wow. when they were being levitated, um, you remember um, uh, the guy that was uh, director of MUFON? Yes. Uh, he did some study on abductees. And when they didn't even have to pray, all they did was utter the name of Jesus. And they had the sensation of falling back into their bed. Mm. Now, I heard him say that out loud. I heard him say it. Now, I've heard and, you uh, before, Brother Greg, say that when you were working at these, because uh, I know you've been at Dulce, you've been at other bases. Uh, I, I, and one thing I remember, I was told a long time ago, it's been years now, that what they said, Area 51, they said that most of what we did there was moved to a base, I want to say is up in Utah. And, uh, Area said, 52, just southwest of Utah Lake. Salt Lake City. Yeah. Called Area 52. And they said most people have no clue about that one. That one's been kept pretty yeah. pretty secret ever since. Well, Area 51, let's just take that. Why did they come up with the number 51? 
have no clue why. And then in, 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 in perfect chronological order, come up with the number 52. There's an area 53, 54, 55, 56. It goes on and on. I haven't been to all those, but I've seen it on documents. Area 56. All of them are equally evil. And Area 51 itself, as your stepdad told you, was nothing but a place where we built military aircraft, and it was an information classification center where they classified things as top secret, classified, blah, blah, blah. And so um, there's a lot to that, um, that classification center, but it's behind Area 51 at S4. And the S in S4 stands for staging area. So staging area for what? That's a good question. What is it a staging area for? It's a staging area. All of them have an S. All of them. They I, all have S's. My stepdad so, told me one time, he said, like we were talking about the Blackhawk. Um, SR-71? Yes. And he said that when when I was I was in high school at the time, and he told me he said, "Well, he said, son, he said, before they ever came out with that, he said we built it twenty years before then." He said, oh, "You yeah, have no idea." He said, "You have no idea the advancement of our technology." Well, I got into that discussion with a friend of mine in Washington about that very plane. He said, you know, Steve, he said, there's something that people don't know about that plane. He said, when you fueled it up and you took off, he said, we, we lose a lot of fuel. He said, because the way that we built the plane, uh, he said, because of the altitude it could fly at, he said, until it got to that altitude, the, the seams would not seam back together tight because you had to build it loose, something to do with pressure or something like that. He said, so we I know used, exactly what he's talking about. used up way too much fuel. He said, that's why when we built the TR, uh, TRB3s, he said, we do a little bit of the framework here, but the rest of it's finished in space, so we don't have that problem anymore. Right. Because remember what I told you the last time we were on. Um, now, I never seen this, but one of the Navy pilots said that they clocked one going 72,000 miles an hour. Wow. If you did, if you did seventy-two thousand miles, an hour, that's like a meteorite. That's how fast that is. If you did seventy-two thousand miles an hour with seams on it, it would peel itself apart. Right. And that's why airplanes, regular aircraft, are done with rivets. Everybody says, "Why don't they just weld?" Because it can't move. Those wings bend. the The B fifty-two bomber when it was loaded, I mean, when it was unloaded, the wings bent twenty feet up. Wow. To lift it. So they, they've got to have be able to move. If that was welded, the wings would break right off. That's why they use rivets right. on planes. So that if a piece does come off, that's the only piece that comes off. Wow. And so uh, mm. speed and altitude have a lot to do. The higher you go, the thinner the air. And that SR-71 went 80 to 100,000 feet and was classified. It said, the document that I read, because nobody really knows how fast it'll go, said that it was classified at 5,000 miles an hour, and it wouldn't, at 5,000 plus, but it would not tell you how fast it would go. And it would, it was a spy plane, and, and it could take a picture of a paperclip on the corner of a street at 80,000 feet. That's how advanced it was. And like your step, <laughs> the day it came out, it's like computers, the day it came out, it was outdated. And when um, I was in the Air Force as an airplane mechanic, I remember, and I never could figure out why, brand spanking new airplanes that had never been flown before, that, except for from uh, wherever they were built to, to the Air Force base, the minute it would land and cool down, they would have us can the parts off of it to fix an old one. Oh wow! You know why? No, the parts were so parts were so expensive, but they wanted to make sure that these old ones 
that the old ones were experiment. They could afford losing it. They couldn't afford to lose the new one. So they, that's why these maneuvers and things that we see that some of these planes can do were tried at no expense because the older airplanes were already played for. So why... Why, why take a chance with a brand new one when we take the parts off of it and try it on the old one and see, and do these maneuvers and see if they hold up? Cause I remember a lot of times going out and canning parts off of the engine, the jet engines and taking parts and they were mainly, mainly interested in the hydraulic system. I was a, I'm a certified uh, government hydraulic specialist. I've got a certificate and everything from the Air Force. And so my job was hydraulics. And so there were some parts that had so much pressure on them that when we tightened the nut down, we call them B-nuts, the nut down on a line that connected to another line, we used to have to put the wrench on it and put a pipe 10, 12 feet long over the wrench to tighten it down as tight as we could get it. And there was so much pressure like the brakes. The, um, and, and I'm getting to something here. Okay. The brake. Um, they're allowed to drip five, uh, one drop every five minutes. So when you change a brake swivel, it, it could have been five drops in one minute. It's been so long. You had to sit there with your watch, and then you would tell the um, guy, the pilot, to turn on the hydraulics to full pressure, and you would have to sit there with the watch and watch that thing. Every, pl- every hydraulic part on there, you had to watch it and time it, how many times it dripped in five minutes. If it exceeded the drip, it was a red X. And what you had to do in the airplane industry is you have a red slash, a red dash, and a red X. Red X, you're grounded. Red slash means it can be fixed later. And a red dash meant it wasn't grounded, but had to be fixed immediately. And so you had this big, thick log book that you went through. And what I'm getting at, is that every single thing is being checked out. And I believe that the reason that we were doing that was we were just in the first stages of reverse engineering. Oh, my goodness. That is interesting. Yes, that that would make sense. Because that is how that they have, you know, I was even told that the when they released in the, the footage, I guess, earlier last year, uh, showing these Tic Tac type aircraft that was filmed off the, I think it was Tic Tac, but they may, I may be wrong on that. When the USS the Nimitz, when well, you know, when they were showing yeah. that footage from the USS Nimitz, um, I was told that that was our aircraft, not not alien. And I said, yeah, You're they kidding don't want me. To scare nobody on the ship. Do what? They don't want to scare nobody on the ship. I had a friend that was on the USS Nimitz. In his time, when we were in our, we were, I would think I was maybe 24 years old back then. And he told me that one time one flew over and they had certain men that they called to the deck. And this craft came and had some kind of light, kind of like a a laser pointer that was going back and forth over them so fast. It covered every single little hair on your body and then disappeared. He said that he was so scared he was ready to go AWOL. Wow. And so, so that's why they don't do that, and they try and disclaim it, because they're afraid the United States will go AWOL. Well, I got news for you. News flash here. The United States has already went AWOL. Yeah, I believe that. I do. We've went AWOL on our own people. The, yeah. All right, Brother Greg, I got a, one I want to ask you about here, and this is going a little bit further off in another direction. When we had, the, we, we know the Space Shuttle Challenger, when it blew up, the rocket blew up on it, you know, faulty, whatever it was on the O-ring or something like that. But Until when that... the UFO looked shooting a laser at it. <laughs> I didn't know that, but that's, that's another good point. But I wanted to ask you... When what was it? Christy McCullough, I believe, I believe, was the name of that teacher that died on the other one coming back in. Yeah, I asked, I asked about that recently, and I said, was there something more to that that we've never been told? And the answer that I got was yes. Good luck. <laughs> uh, said yeah. that the reason. It said that actually the Russians were behind the down that that 
shuttle coming down. And I said, why? How was that? How would that be? With our blessing. Well, he said that what it was, he said, you have to remember, he said, Russia has been the ambassadors to space. They have the special agreement with these entities to enter into space, and we piggyback with them. He said, I don't know what it was, he said, but all I know is that they were given the command by these demonic entities to take that shuttle down and not allow it to enter back into Earth's atmosphere. Right. And see, the only ones that know what you're telling me, and and I already know Mm -hmm. that too, as well as you do, are the ones, the only ones that they're telling that to are the ones who who know what they're talking about. And they they don't want anybody else to know it. And you know what? When I left um, Area 51 for good, you know what my, the last words were to me? What's that? Thanks for your service. Thanks for your service and go ahead and tell a lie because we're not going to follow you and nobody will believe you anyway. And that's exactly right. People think, that's why I say, Brother Greg, when I first heard you, and I think it was Daniel, uh, one of Daniel Oates' interviews that I heard you on, and then I started listening to one after another. I told my wife, I said, never in my life have I seen someone that could confirm the things that I'd been saying for so long. Uh, you know, I said, you are the first one uh, to really talk about things in such a way, the way that I knew it. And so I was determined one way or the other to get to meet you and be able to discuss those things with you. Um, you know, and, and uh, there, there's one, I think, it, well, actually, probably when we finish this broadcast, I'm going to share one with you that we can maybe talk about a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll make it public yet, but there's one I just heard about that I want to talk to you about that just blew me away. Uh, anyway, though, let's go back to yet, um, and, and I know we should get ready to, to kind of end it up because we've probably been a long time, but I just so enjoy talking with you, Brother Greg. But what I wanted to ask you, you know a lot of crazy things that are about to happen on this earth. I know that uh, the friend of mine that uh, that we used to share a lot of the stuff with before he went into retirement, and uh, we still talk from time to time. When he was going through surgery, he had a difficult time. And I remember his own wife shared with me. Um, he said the doctor came in. He said he grabbed the doctor by the sleeve of the arm, and he was just weeping. And he said, you have no idea what's about to happen on this earth. And the, doc- you don't. the doctor looked at him like he was losing it, right? And, and he says, what are you talking about? And he says, he said, I can't even tell you. He said, I can't, no, I can't tell you. He said, but I would love to be able to sit down and talk to you to warn you about what's about to happen. Well, I'll warn people right now what's about to happen. That's what I want to do, Brother Greg. I want people to be aware of what's coming. You go right this ahead. Biden, this, this stuff that Biden did and all this and that, and people talking against them isn't going to do you any good. It's just wasting your breath. They are moving along with their plan to depopulate the earth. They want to depopulate it down to 500,000. And they... Uh, are going to use any means or any lie that they can. That's why they want to keep abortion in place because they don't want to have to deal with more people. They don't want to have to deal with kids. So they've decided, well, we'll let people through the border and then we'll get so crowded. People will think, well, I don't want to have a baby in this world, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not what God said. God says to uh, be fruitful and multiply. Don't worry about what's going to happen to say but there is going to be a civil war that's coming possibly in the next couple of weeks. And I told uh, my friend Joseph told me where you live, something big over the next week is going to happen in Tennessee. Wow. And you know, it's interesting. The theme of contact I had just said to me in a text, and by the way, uh, they said to let you know that they're praying for you specifically. Um, and, uh, uh, yes. 
And okay. uh, the person is a real, real sincere believer, and uh, and said uh, uh, said also I I will keep lifting him up in prayer, and that was specifically about you. Uh, that's a real prayer warrior right there too, brother. Yes. But they said that's very humbling. They said to me that uh, yeah they they said things could break loose as early as within two weeks. Um, of the well, things that are going on. What I just said. Yeah, exactly. That's what I just, brother Greg. I tell you, I don't. I I remember one time. I think a caller called in on uh, Daniel. Maybe it was, could have been Daniel. It might have been somebody else. And they were, they they may or or maybe he got a question in or I forget how it was, but it's a question that was presented, and they said to you. Uh, do you have any way of proving these things? I like to fell out of the chair laughing, and uh, did you hear what I told them? oh yes, I did. did. How do you think they got me put the violin cabinet on my back and walk out of there? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I have no way of proving it. It's proven itself. And you know what? Yep. These uh, uh, aliens. I, I for just uh, I'm like you for lack of better words. People understand it more than they do the word demon. Right, but right. these aliens um, are sitting back waiting. They're getting ready to have their turn, and it's going to be bad. And um, if you're not prayed up and born again, you're going to die. That's all there is to it. And some of us are going to die anyway for the truth. Yes. I remember you told me one time, Brother Greg, you said, you know, ain't nothing wrong with having some guns, but I can tell you straight up, ain't going to do you a whole lot of good. You know how many guns I have in the house? None. I don't have any. Because I figured out a long time ago, I'm thinking about buying something to kill bear with in case one comes up here. I have a very special, special, special person coming here, and I just want to make sure that I got everything in line. But I have no guns because they're not going to do you any good. What are you going to do against something that's three times the size you are who can run three times faster and think three times faster. Like I said in the last broadcast, when you see them, that's the only time you got to react. You have right. to pull that trigger the second you see them. And then when it's all over, you got to hope you didn't shoot somebody because they can save shift right back to a human being right before they die. And the police will hold you accountable. Yep. That really struck me when you said that, too. And uh, uh, I think there, you know, it kind of reminds me of they had this TV series uh, one time, uh, and I forget, I, I don't remember the name of it, but I remember what it was. They filmed it up in Oregon, and they were talking about how that these people, their true nature would come out. They they would shape shift into, like the one guy in the movie, he was a werewolf, and They'd shape shift these different things, and then they'd shoot the guy uh, when he was the wild creature. The police would, and the next thing you know, it shape shift into a human. They'd been the, and the policeman was like freaking out. In fact, the black guy that starred in that movie, I forget his name, but I used me and him used to talk on Facebook at one time, and uh, he became a very well known actor even after that. But, uh, but I would want to say his name, even if I knew it. I, I think I know who you're talking about, but. Yeah, but I don't believe in, it was you know, interesting though because that's what would happen in the movie. They would they would kill this in this this entity, uh, Grim. That's the name of it. It was Grim. The series was called Grim because yeah. it was supposedly these these uh, guys had this ability to detect that they were they were evil entities and they would take them out and, and then they turn back human again. So I could that's just kind that's of freaky. No. Need a chainsaw handy. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> that I do have. Yeah, you, there you, you go. <laughs> you, know I, you know how remote it is where I'm at. Yes, it For is, people brother. The, people in the, that are listening to us now, you have no idea how remote it is where I live. I'm completely almost off the grid. Well, you know, I want to ask you this in closing then because there's something else that's on my mind. We got into creating these 
we called it super soldiers, but they basically mixed some, and I don't know how they did it, but I think bear, lion, and one other creature, and they transformed into some huge creatures. Uh, and uh, when I say huge, they, they, you know, they're, they, they ended up getting, size. yeah, exactly. And, uh, and I was told that we released some into the wild in Russia, even here in America, and they were hoping that they would still lean towards the humanistic side where they could control them, but they got out of control. But That's they were exactly able. The problem with. Yes, and they were able to procreate. Do you think, Brother Greg, that, that, that the government created those entities because of knowing the type creatures that are coming? And then one other thing I want to shoot your way to. I was told the reason why they went for Nimrod and they're wanting to resurrect Nimrod is because they know from one of the ancient documents that the government has is classified. Nimrod, it was prophesied that Nimrod would be resurrected in the last days and that he knew how to read the ancient technology that was hidden in the Sphinx, and that's why they wanted him to come back to try to, to defeat the entities that are coming to wage war on the earth. That's exactly right. But it's all going to turn against them because the very things that they create are going to destroy creation. And they, they don't understand what they're doing. I get choked up talking about it because. It's all right, brother. They just don't get it. They don't. You're they right. Just, they just don't get it. And I've seen it. So I know they're doing it. And I've seen what comes out of it. And it's nothing good. It's destructive, murderous, evil, satanic parasites, what it is. And they go going through these dimensions and. They've reached seven dimensions. But you remember Chuck Missler? Yes, I knew Chuck. No, I, I miss him, don't you? Yep, Chuck was a very good man, very brilliant man. Genius. And he found, he found 11 dimensions instead of seven. He wow. did a mathematical equation on a box and found out that there was 11 dimensions. Well, think about 9-11... And all these 11 things that happen on 11, yes. 11, 11. And uh, so there's a lot. That, see, everything everything that anybody needs to know about the demonic side is right there in the open for you on Google Earth or anything you want to look at about the way that the United States and other countries have been structured. They were structured with the... Uh, engineering plans of the fallen angels all this all these things are in a line and in construction for a certain evil purpose evil wow it's evil all and, right brother um, here's what here's what we'll do we're going to close off but i'm going to ask you i'm going to ask you to hang on we're going to close this one here but i want to talk to you about one more thing uh, that we might let out later, but it'll only take about five minutes for that. But before we do, Brother Greg, um, I know you've been through a tremendous lot. The listeners don't know, but your wife passed away recently, Sister Peggy. And she was an amazing, amazing believer. I, out of all the people I've ever prayed for in my life, I never seen someone with the faith like Peggy had. And uh, she was just really a sweetheart. And and so many times when you would do interviews with Daniel, you'd see Peggy in the background. And yeah. uh, so she's always just a sweetheart. And I know it was totally unexpected. And uh, and you I found out one week, and then three, two more weeks she was dead. Yes, she. No one knew that she had uh, cancer throughout her entire body, and I, and Peggy well, probably I knew, did. but she just, as you said to me, she would went through it twice before, and you didn't think she wanted to go through it again. And uh, the, as far as going through the chemo and stuff, and but greatly missed. Uh, I wished I would have got to know her in person, and I know that she was your sweetheart. Um, but I say that because you've been through a lot, and just 
you being able to have the strength to do this interview with me, I, I really appreciate it tremendously. Uh, and I know that, you know, you're, you're retired. Uh, Peggy was as well. And the people before, they, they helped uh, to support the work you do to bring out these testimonies. And, of course, my dog keeps talking to me here in the background. Okay, but, but anyway, uh, can you share with the people how they could reach out to you to help support the work you do? Because I consider this a ministry in itself. Uh, what you do, brother, brother Greg? Could you share yeah, with people how to I'll, do that? I'll, I'll get beat up for a month or two now after this. But yeah. at any rate, they're not going to kill me. But if anybody wants to help me, they can. Um, I'm missing her check now, so it's just me, and I'm alone up here right now. I am. I won't be for long, but I'm alone right now. And, uh, they can get me as a, send it to my name, G R E G R I N C H I C H at 325 Angora Drive, Bostick, North Carolina, 28018. Okay. And I'm going to put that in the description. Uh, there below for you guys so you can see it also it'll appear here on the screen where brother Greg's picture was at there so you could write that down uh, so however God lays upon your heart uh, to, to be able to help out and I do know uh, I know a lot of the personal things that brother Greg has shared with me there uh, very difficult time you know that it's not something that they were that he was prepared for uh, in the first place so However God lays on your heart, that would be greatly appreciated. Brother Greg, we appreciate you being here with us. Again, stay with me, brother, for a moment here. God bless you, and thank you all for listening.